Well, every blessing to you all. Welcome back to another driving pulpit video. I want to get into the subject of conversion and why do people convert from one religion to another religion. Let's start with Andrew Tate. He's very much the man of the moment. So he converted to Islam about one or two years ago and he told Katie Hopkins very recently that he converted because Islam offers strength and power and he saw Christianity as weak and uh, impotent of course he doesn't realize that Christians are not told to uh, destroy our enemies we're told to pray for them because of course one day God will deal with those that oppose the Lord Jesus Christ attack the cross and seek to find other ways to glory you think about Ivanka she of course converted to Judaism why due to love and marriage she wanted to marry uh, her husband and of course uh, Jared is his name and unless she converted to Judaism she couldn't marry him you think back to the 1960s somebody like Cassius Clay who converted to Islam uh, mostly down to the civil rights movements he saw the white man as the problem and the black man as the solution and along with Malcolm X these two converted to Islam of course later on people like Malcolm X realized that he'd been basically uh, used as a pawn and he fell out with Muhammad Elijah but that's uh, one of the reasons why these people convert nothing to do with holiness righteousness peacefulness so on and so forth it's due to the reasons that I've already given think back to 1950s when Sammy Davis was in a car crash and as he was recuperating in hospital he woke up to find this little man sitting at his bedside asking him how he was and it turned out he was a rabbi and Sammy who wasn't particularly religious uh, was very uh, touched that this gentleman uh, had come to visit him in hospital and he converted to uh, Judaism when I was living back south I remember one day speaking to a next door neighbor and he told me that he'd once been a uh, Greek Orthodox and he met this woman he fell in love with her and she was a Muslim and he said to me it's all the same thing basically I said no it's not and his sort of eyes just <laughs> exploded but we talked about religion very briefly and he said to me well I love her I'm gonna I converted to Islam and otherwise I couldn't marry her and some years later I spoke to a neighbor and I said to her I said what happened to such and such and uh, you know are they still living around the air and she said no they got divorced so there's a picture of a guy like a vunk who, who like a vunk who uh, converted for marriage so on and so forth some years ago I met a couple in our town excuse the glare and a nice couple went to an evangelical church that I recall and can remember quite well and they said to me that their daughter had met this Jewish guy an Orthodox Jew and swept off her feet and uh, she had to convert to Judaism to basically marry him and if that wasn't bad enough as far as they were concerned uh, she had two children with this Orthodox Jew and uh, she told them that uh, her parents are basically unclean because they are Gentiles and uh, many years had passed and it was bad enough losing their daughter uh, to uh, this Orthodox chap but on top of that they never saw their grandchildren Think about Justin Peterson, he's been used very much in recent months and years to get people under the one world religion and his wife has been very ill for a long period of time. I think she's a Catholic uh, from her birth and he's very close to the Catholic Church. Not completely, but uh, he generally speaks fondly of Roman Catholicism uh, based on his wife's religion, like I say, and he spends time with her. I'll discuss that more in a few moments. Do you think back to the 1970s when John Wayne was very sick, dying of cancer in fact. He'd been a mason all of his life, as had Nat King Cole. And John Wayne and Nat King Cole on their deathbeds are converted to Roman Catholicism. For John Wayne, it was his second or third wife that managed to talk him round. Uh, for Nat Cole, uh, it was uh, for different reasons, I believe. When I was doing street work many years ago in Wigan, we don't go so often now, but we used to go weekly, about 10 or 15 years ago, I remember speaking to a brother who's now with the Lord, and he said to me, he said, would you please come and speak to this woman? Uh, she runs a market store with her husband. He's a bishop in the LDS church, and uh, she's also a Mormon now, used to be a Catholic. I said, yeah, why not? So I went over to speak to this couple, about 70 something, and I, 
I spoke to her, her name was Pat, I think from memory, and I said, you know, are you born again? And she said, well, I'm a Mormon. We went back and forth, her and her husband didn't say a word, very quiet gentleman, sort of busy, you know, tending to the, uh, the market store. And I spent about 25, 30 minutes with this woman trying to get her to see she needed to be born again. And it was a tough slog, really difficult. And she was a hard woman, she was Irish, and uh, she'd, gone, she'd gone over to England. I guess the 1940s or 50s. But anyway, I spent a lot of time with her and trying to speak to her husband as well. I got nowhere with this couple whatsoever. And about five or six years later, I got a phone call one night from this brother saying to me, uh, Pat's got stage four cancer, and would you believe it, she'd gone back to the Catholic Church. So I went back to Wigan, and I spoke to her again for the second time, and it was even harder than the first time. And I tried to explain to this woman who was seriously ill that the Catholic Church couldn't save her and nor could the LDS Church save her and she'd gone back to her roots basically so you can convert you can revert it goes both ways of course it's really frustrating getting nowhere with this uh, elderly Mormon couple and I've noticed over the years that one of the reasons why people convert to other religions nearly every single time is because somebody nice spoke to them for Sammy it was the rabbi I've met many people over the years who come up to me and said, uh, I'm now a Catholic, or I'm now an Anglican, or whatever it might be, but mostly a Catholic. And I said, what's the story? Oh, I worked with somebody who's a very nice guy, and he told me about the Catholic Church, and it really spoke to my heart, basically. And sometimes you can do that. You can come alongside somebody and say nice things to people and make them feel better about themselves, and that's all it takes. But you think to the scripture, Saul of Tarsus, when he got called out of Judaism. He spent three years in the wilderness. You think about Ruth and Rahab back in the Old Testament when they came to uh, when they came to faith in the one true God and Cornelius in the book of Acts like chapter 10. And Cornelius was a really strong, uh, righteous man. He would tithe, he would pray, he was a good donor, but he wasn't saved until he was born again. And uh, for me, that's what a real picture of a conversion is me to live as Christ and to die as gain so don't uh, wander or don't fall over yourselves or start to question why so many people are converting to this or that religion it means nothing it means nothing whatsoever this isn't a numbers game I mean Islam we are told is the fastest growing religion in the world today I guess it must be right it must be the true religion right well of course not most people convert to Islam like I say power and strength and uh, prosperity in fact was it this last week Andrew Tate was uh, lamenting the death of a Hamas terrorist because for him he sees religion as strength power not meekness and humility and uh, self-sacrifice and all these people that I've spoken to over the years probably thousands if the truth were known and yet I can tell you as, as I sit this morning went to head, heading off to some street work shortly as God is my witness, I can't think of many people over the years, out of the tens of thousands I've spoken to, that have said to me, I got saved because I wanted to live holy, righteously, and I fell in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, I went to the Catholic Church because of this, or the CV because of that, or the Ramsbottom couple, she went over, her, their daughter went over to the Orthodox religion to marry her husband, like Ivanka did with her husband, Jared. That's why people convert for the most part. It's got nothing to do with God Almighty, holiness, truth, righteousness, so on and so forth. It's what can I get out of it? I want him, I want her, this guy down the south. He left the Orthodox religion for Islam. The marriage broke down, they got divorced. And I wonder what that chap is doing with himself now after doing his shahada. So for me, I don't care much for testimonies or conversions really. And also I've noticed over the years that those who have uh, ministries where they give their testimonies all of the time, uh, that becomes their religion. They just talk about their conversions, their you know experiences, so on and so forth. And after a while, it becomes rather boring, rather bland. So these are the people that I thought just would briefly uh, discuss with you this morning and uh, encourage you to read the scriptures and spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and fasting if you need to. And really, you should turn off social media at least once or twice a week. And also another thing I should just say very briefly, I saw a clip on X a few nights ago of one of the Hezbollah terrorists saying that they, Hezbollah, are actually paying Muslims uh, to infiltrate the West, which, which, which wouldn't surprise me at all, to promote Islam. 
and that reminds me what the uh, what the KGB did back during the Cold War when they paid people to come over to the West and push uh, uh, evolution, atheism, the old uh, KGB and Stasi days, and that's why you got a war going on at the moment, a war against your mind. And if you're not born again, if you're not uh, steady and uh, firm in the scriptures and founded upon the rock of all ages, you've got no chance really. And you'll lose heart, you'll get discouraged, this and that. Uh, but really, it's, it's all down to your own fault. Turn the radio off, turn television off, get off YouTube at least once or twice a week and all your social media platforms. Don't fall for the propaganda. It's going to be, continue to be ramped up in the days, weeks, and probably months ahead. And just keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul told you in Philippians chapter 3 that he counted all things lost for Christ. And like I said last time, religion for him, once he found Christ, was dung, D-U-N-G. Which, if you say it to a Catholic, they'll go crazy, or an Orthodox, they'll go crazy. But of course, man is very religious. When Paul was knocked off the horse in uh, was Acts chapter 9, he would say, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Do, what should I do? Nothing you can do, Paul. Salvation is a free gift. But once you are saved, and of course you get busy for the Lord Jesus Christ, and off you go, preaching the gospel. So great testimonies, true biblical conversions. I've given you two or three. There's many more in scripture, of course, but uh, they are the ones that you want to read about carefully and read what took place after they truly converted and became part of God's family. For the Old Testament, Rahab and Ruth, and for the New Testament, uh, Cornelius, and also the uh, Philippian jailer, another good example, and uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. And this is how the eunuch went off rejoicing in Acts chapter 8. And that's what really, for me, is a, a, uh, a great picture of a conversion. It's not, I now go to this church, or I go to that church, or I follow this ministry or that ministry. In fact, just a few days ago, I came across a woman online, and she was speaking about how her and her husband and their two young sons went from Hawaii to Arizona to attend Stephen Anderson's church. And she said she lived four doors down from where Stephen Anderson lives. And I didn't watch all of the video, a bit of a rant, but I thought that's quite a distance from Hawaii to... Uh, Arizona to just pluck up everything and move thousands of miles after a week of binging on Stephen Anderson's videos and a husband I guess listened to his wife like Adam did with Eve and they packed up and moved halfway across the other side of the country. She's now very disillusioned as you would imagine doesn't know what she should do with herself and she went in too quickly didn't do the didn't do the research like so many people do they go over to religion, Judaism, Islam, or Catholicism. They're full of envy. I mean, they're full of zeal, envy, full of zeal. Uh, initially, envy, of course, but f full of zeal. They go over to their religions and they get into it in a big way. And for them, that really is the uh, the pinnacle of the happiness. Then, of course, they start to discover truths about these people's religions or their religions, which they've fallen into. And they feel, what do we do now? You know, we've converted to Islam. We've done the Shahada or we finished the RCIA course, we've been baptized, christened, so on and so forth, catechized, or we've gone over to, like I say, Stephen Anderson's church, and what are you going to do now? And that's where people start to wish they hadn't rushed into anything, and that's why you need to weigh out the pros and cons of getting saved, because once you are saved, God will expect things from you, but to be saved is as simple as ABC, it really is. You come as you are. You receive what God has given to you. Given for what is what, what you, you receive what God has provided for you uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and you receive Him as your one-off blood atonement. Once you are born again, you pass from death unto life, and that's a moment when you're very vulnerable, very impressionable, and that's when most false teachers will come along and just mop you up. The cults will do it. The false religions will do it. Most of your YouTube teachers will do it. And the prosperity gospel and the NRA, NR, NRA uh, and your uh, new independent fundamentalist Baptist church will come along and uh, try and suck you up. And that's why Paul, the great Paul, the apostle Paul, who was a scholar, spent three years, I'm not saying you should, but he spent three years in the wilderness praying and fasting, having to unlearn most of what he had learned as a Pharisee, because of course most of that had come from tradition, uh, from the uh, doctrines of men and the uh, mouths of other people and the pens of religious people and for the most part it had nothing to do with God Almighty so that's, that's what I want to say today 
and keep praying for us please like share and subscribe this video it helps the algorithm enormously uh, we're up against many enemies in this country we're fighting on three or four fronts sometimes five fronts simultaneously so please support us stand with us and help us to do what we need to do to get the gospel out and like i say these people that converted converted mostly did so for alternative reasons nothing to do with god almighty and that woman went back to the uh, catholic church had a full requiem mass as would john wayne and nat king cole and other people and yet she's still lost because she's in hell now quite likely unless she was truly saved to start with which i doubt very much but she was uh hopping from church to church religion to religion and that scripture says how they're always learning but never come into knowledge of the truth and that's so true so that's all just a short one for today uh and uh, god bless you all keep us in prayer and thank you for watching these videos and speak to you all soon in jesus name amen and amen